U.S. intends to protect Taiwan from Chinese invasion with thousands of naval drones. Despite all the warnings from Beijing and diplomatic statements recognizing the territorial integrity of China, Washington does not intend to reduce the aid to the Taiwan region. A senior U.S. military officer expressed his desire to defend the island from the Chinese invasion. The head of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Samuel Paparo, promised that Washington would defend Taiwan from a possible military operation by mainland China by deploying thousands of unmanned ships in the Taiwan Strait. The officer expressed his intention to turn the water area into an unmanned hell using classified capabilities. In an interview with the Washington Post, Paparo explained that such a development of events is possible if the Chinese Army Navy crosses the 100-mile sea zone of Taiwan. The Admiral suggested that an unmanned armada would complicate the actions of the Chinese Army and make it possible to prepare a large-scale response to Beijing to make their lives extremely miserable for a month, which will give time for everything else, Samuel Paparo answered the Washington Post journalist. According to the U.S. Admiral, it is necessary to prepare for such actions before 2027 since, according to the Pentagon, Beijing is planning forceful actions by the Chinese army in Taiwan by this date. The Chinese embassy in the United States has already responded to the loud threats from the head of the Indo-Pacific Command. The diplomatic mission warned that no one is advised to underestimate Beijing's ability and determination to defend its territorial integrity. Although the U.S. maintains formal ties with China, it is Taiwan's most important political and military partner and bound by law to provide the means for the island to defend itself, maintaining a policy of what it calls strategic ambiguity. Meetings between officials from Taiwan and the U.S have often drawn anger in Beijing, which has not ruled out the use of force to take control of Taiwan. Taiwan's seat at the United Nations was transferred to the People's Republic of China in 1971, and in the years that followed, the island likewise lost its membership in other international organizations to Beijing. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited Patriot Missile Systems Base in Germany during his official visit to the country on Tuesday. Zelensky published a video in his official Telegram channel, showing Patriot systems that Germany will deliver to Ukraine to boost the country's defense capabilities. I examined the Patriot battery, which will be transferred to our country, and met with Ukrainian soldiers who are being trained on it. I talked with the defenders and awarded them with state awards. We are making every effort to ensure that the Ukrainian sky is cleared of Russian terror," Zelensky's post reads. The Ukrainian leader, accompanied by German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius, visited the 21st Anti-Aircraft Missile Group in northern Germany, Ukrainian media reported. He was shown the conditions in which members of Ukrainian Defense Forces train, as well as several Patriot installations. On the same day, Zelensky addressed Bundestag, in a speech in which he thanked Germans for their support since the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of his country. He expressed hope that the war would be brought to an end by the joint efforts of Ukraine's European neighbors and international partners. We will end this war in the interests of Ukraine and in the interests of all of Europe, of all of us and in the interests of everyone who comes after us. We will end this war on our terms," Zelensky stated. Zelensky earlier met Federal President Frank-Walter Steinmeier on Tuesday to discuss security situation in Ukraine, Kiev's current needs against Russian attacks on the energy sector, as well as the ongoing hostilities along the front line. During the visit, the Ukrainian leader will participate in the Ukraine Recovery Conference organized in Germany. Russia began recruiting women from prisons to the front in Ukraine. The scale is revealed. At the end of May, Russia released a group of women from prison to participate in the fighting in Ukraine. This may indicate a new stage in the Kremlin's use of criminals in war. This is reported by the New York Times, citing ex-prisoners who maintain contact with those who are still in prison.
According to them, military recruiters took several women from a prison near St. Petersburg. It is unclear whether their release is an isolated incident, a pilot program, or the start of a larger wave of recruitment. As of the beginning of 2022, about 30,000 women were serving sentences in Russian prisons. Recruiters began canvassing prisons for women throughout European Russia in the fall of 2023. However, until now, convicted women who entered military service remained prisoners without official explanation. The recruitment of women convicts comes at a time when the Russian government is resorting to increasingly unconventional schemes to attract volunteers from the margins of Russian society trying to avoid another unpopular conscription. In addition to prisoners, these recruitment schemes are aimed at debtors, accused of crimes and foreigners. Journalists say it is not yet known what duties the conscripts will perform at the front. Recruiters offered prisoners contracts to serve as snipers, combat nurses and frontline radio operators for one year. Then only about 40 out of 400 prisoners in the colony agreed. They were offered a pardon and a payment equivalent to about $2,000 a month, which is about 10 times the minimum wage in Russia. As former prisoners explained, the women made the decision to go to the front, among other things, because of the harsh conditions in Russian prisons. They were forced to remain silent at all times and spent up to 12 hours a day doing mandatory work in the prison's sawmill, even in sub-zero winter temperatures. According to the Financial Times, by the end of 2024 or the beginning of 2025, a new wave of partial mobilization may be announced in Russia. Despite heavy losses, the occupying army is now 15% larger than when the full-scale war began. Financial incentives that raised military salaries to unprecedented levels played the biggest role in persuading Russians to go to war.